I just wanted to add, uh, you know, just a clarification from you. Globalization, the collapse of glo globalization, uh, you know, which is visible throughout the world today. Even uh, exit of uh, British uh, <coughs> Union from uh, European Union. All this is a trend uh, because of globalization, collapse of globalization. I think uh, that all that has resulted in even the crisis in democracy in the entire world, uh, which we can see uh, victory of uh, Trump to you know, uh, victory of Modi here and all that. So there is a, a trend visible, and it is basically the, the trend we follow of globalization, which is responsible. I think uh, this is time that everybody you know disbands uh, this globalization unless globalization is disbanded. We go for again small is beautiful. We should not go for you know large uh, entities and all that. I think democracy will be in peril if you know the same trend of globalization continues. I just wanted to so clarify. Yes. Uh, suppose through some magic band, uh, uh, we follow Stiglitz. Uh, prescription make flexible Europe or defeated the European Union. Uh, my suspicion is that the problems uh, will not be solved because whether it is right or left or center uh, political spectrum, uh, I don't know about the prevailing philosophical debates and leadership in the society, but from politics, if one reduces the things in which uh, your societies draw meaning in life uh, or they uh, hanker or run after. It's only two things, uh, citizen identity and a consumer identity. And <clears throat> there's no cultural civilizational dimension to identity. Um, the way you fought your fight between church and the state, the way secularism in Europe has meant uh, deculturization, rupturing from its own past, uh, the way you have defined the <coughs> relationship between gender, <coughs> the individual free notion of individual freedom uh, after, <coughs> for I don't know about other countries, in your country after 14-15 years of age, children move out and so they are no longer sons and daughters in proximity. So, uh, the institution of family, institution of community, institution of religiosity, spirituality, to uh, give some other identity of drawing meaning in life. And if that does not happen, how will these, if the goals are similar, to have more and more consumption, and to, uh, the only difference is how you make it just and manageable. That's the minor difference between all the parties. So I think unless uh, on these kind of civilizational, cultural, spiritual issues, there is some rethinking and uh, rethinking by the polity and society as a whole, uh, this uh, crisis of democracy will not be resolved. And as far as uh, consultancy from India is concerned, yes, uh, uh, in recent centuries, uh, we were the first to translate Quran Sharif to our language people and about Hinduism the way we, you know, after, just after in partition where hundreds of thousands of Muslims were killed by Hindus and vice versa, uh, we had a secular constitution. But now we don't, no longer have that kind of uh, moral political leadership, neither among Hindus nor among Muslims and no, uh, and no, Gandhi to reform Hinduism and no Malana Azad to reinterpret Quran Sharif. So don't expect any consultancy from us. You have to fend for yourself. Yes. Okay, I am Sudhakar. I basically repeat what I stated earlier as a question. I must make myself clear, I am not an economist. I don't understand much of what is being said in economics. However, every valuable and tangible resource when used in production of goods or services 
there must be a finite non-zero positive component towards the cost of production. This is a fundamental tenet of costing. Second, the, if any mechanism of market economics allows land to be used for non-agrarian use by ownership, by the simplistic definition of uh, depreciation, the cost of using land as a resource becomes zero. So I see this as a fundamental flaw. Being outside of economics, I am not afraid of asking even a very stupid question. This is a fundamental and fatal flaw in economics as being followed all over the world, <coughs> without question. When there is an opportunity that the same land could be used for lease and the cost of uh, using that valuable resource, invaluable resource, tangible, there is, uh, you can assign a cost for production or giving services. Then the skyrocketing price of the land in the urban areas will push the cost of, I mean, production basis to outside. If you are going on a freeway, you are not paying for the land use. You are only paying for laying the road and maintaining the road at the most. Stop paying for the land. You would not even be able to drive on the road. I have made a calculation in Indian highways. While the cost of laying a modern highway is 10 crores per kilometer, the cost of the land is a couple of hundred crores and even if a 3% lease is levied on a couple of hundred crores, the current toll would increase by a factor of anywhere between 5 to 10. The mega production systems would simply collapse because the cost of transportation would be huge. So I see a very great effect, for good or for bad I don't know, but would you like to Think about it and give me any negatives. If land were to be used only by lease, even for public good, for all non agrarian uses. Yeah, it's very clear what you are wanting to say. Uh, anybody else? It's too technical. Um, yeah. yes, yes. Question as an impossible. Actually, I have no question. I just wanted to appreciate the talk and wanted to give a few comments. Uh, not to be so. Ah, yeah, please, uh, can I do it? Yeah, please. Okay. My, my feeling is that, uh, number one, uh, congratulations, you are not fighting yourself for a long time. 70 years you have been at peace, all of you, thanks to earlier versions of e EU. So that's a great, great, great thing because Europe was never at peace in its history for almost five, seven hundred years. So in a way, the idea of European Union or before it was called European Commission has served its purpose, biggest. Then you went on a little more on centralizing the, the euro and all those things. And it has proven that on top of that, there is a way of living. Each country way of living is living on credit practically, as he said. Everybody's consumerism is, everybody has 200% of their income as, as credit. The country overall GDP, double of GDP they are spending. Obviously something is going to happen. I mean, nobody's going to pay. I'm not going to pay for somebody who's having a lavish life while I'm earning it or suffering it. So, France uh, and this Germany was taking it. Greece, Greeks are known, known, philanderers. Greeks are known if they have 10 euros in their pocket, they will spend 100 euros. So, somebody or other need to teach them a lesson. And this probably they are learning some, I don't know why. They are learning some lesson. <laughs> I, I understand what you are saying, this is resulting into poverty, yes, it will result into poverty. But overall, because of European Union, certain level of discipline has started coming. You remember those days in, in Italy when uh, their lira was their currency, 1,800 liras for a dollar. <coughs> similarly, EU, EU, similarly Portugal, similarly Spain, all of them, they're, they're, they're Boys and girls who were earning 1,000 euro by spending 10,000 euro in a month. You go, best car they will have, best clothes they will have, everything best they will have, just take credit from the bank and use it. Some time or other it will bust. And it is busting. Now, it is easy to think that in olden times when you, Lira was the currency in Italy or uh, whatever currency Greek has, 
that they could just print and uh, come out like 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 uh, Obama did or like uh, U U.S. did, just easing, easing, and print money, print dollars, and flood the money so that there is no collapse. That now, sometime or other, that will collapse. So, in a way, yes, loosening of U U European Union will happen. It will happen, whether you like it or not. It will happen because nobody likes to live in a centralized way. But that is not the solution also to the problems that were there. Portugal, Italy, uh, Spain, uh, as well as uh, Greece. Even earlier, they were having, uh, I recall, I used to go quite often to Italy. In those days, Italy was always having up and down. Similarly, Portugal used to be having. So I would say that don't be too concerned. As far as my feeling of the rightist movements are concerned, there is an angle that it is in to some extent the auto correction also. We leftist uh, activists were also too theoretical. They were talking in air, uh, but somebody else was paying for all that welfare that was coming. Probably you were paying, and Finland is the best place actually. With, you can live a beautiful life uh, without having any earning actually. Uh, I understand that uh, because you were paying 100% or 50% of your income as taxes. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, uh, there is a correction going on. There are writers who really have a cause, reason. Why Modi came in India and Trump came, Trump came in, 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 in the US or uh, in some other places, this uh, text did happen. Because this is a reaction to over liberalism, probably over leftism, probably too many people eating on others' plate out of nothing. So, somebody or other, a correction was due. Too much political correctness, people were afraid to talk. Like, I have lived in Islamic countries, but I never talked about Islam. I was afraid to talk. There was too much consciousness in us, to, even though our views may be wrong. But one should have feeling of freely talking about it, uh, even if my views are completely different, but people were restrained. Um, I just took an extreme example. But anyway, I think it is a correction. So it is not that big a cause for, for, for concern um, as far as uh, uh, the political side of it is concerned. It will auto-correct, it will come back. Uh, but the best part that I foresee for future also, you will not be fighting yourselves. Except what has happened is, till 70 years back, we were funding Europe, England, and then other colonies were funding. So you were having war everywhere. Even now, some of the Europeans behave the same way. In every war, you will find them. Even if they send only two fighters, they will bomb Libya, they will bomb uh, Syria, everywhere, wherever America goes, they will also add their little uh, kitty of two bombers or 10 soldiers or hundred uh, tanks or something to go and fight. This is the old colonial thinking still going on that they still have a power to dominate the world. Those days they must understand they do not have that power left. Times of hangover of colonialism in which they still can control the, the other countries as they are even today trying to do is long gone. It's long long gone. So somewhere or the other a thinking need to come and actually it was happening when Iraq was being bomb about to be bombarded, there was a serious resistance to Blair in England, in Germany, in Italy. They didn't want them to send their forces to fight in Iraq, but they went because they old hangover. And still they keep spending money on it, a lot of money, but I think this is slowly, slowly they will learn their, Europeans will learn their lessons and stop doing it because they no more have that capability. Or nor, nor will they have it. That's all my comment. I appreciate your talk very much. I enjoyed it. And I thank you very much and thank you for inviting me. Just one uh, uh, addition to what he has said. Europe already had, as he has said, so sovereign debt crisis. Then we had the crisis in Portugal, Italy, Greece and Spain. Do you expect further such crisis to come? Uh, yes, totally, thank you. Then you have to please come here.
works more more hours than the average German. So so the picture about the lazy Greeks who are overspending is is part German propaganda. Uh, some of the cases are true, but the, uh, but the situation is more complex and and Greeks have to bear part of the blame, but but they have never been given a chance to to recover from the from the crisis. About the land lease idea, I don't know whether I can go. It's an interesting idea, but but I'm not economist either, so I. I think that the idea should, I keep that idea in mind, but I cannot really say anything very clever about it uh, immediately. It, but it's an interesting idea. I'm glad to hear all Greeks, but then how are they spending 250% of their GDP? From where, yeah? When this crisis was happening, they were spending 250% of their GDP. How? I agree, they 